I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game to your system. And I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. I have to mention this before we begin. This game will cook your GPU. The first time I booted this game up in the intro cutscene, I noticed my room was getting warmer. Then I looked at the GPU temperature and saw that it was peaking at around 77 degrees Celsius, where in other games, my GPU temps can reach 70 to 73 degrees Celsius in the worst case scenarios. Keep in mind that I have a triple fan RTX 3060 like the one shown on screen right now. So this is not normal. Be prepared. Now for the settings. The game supports all the new upscalers alongside Unreal Engine's TSR. All of them support native resolution slash native anti-aliasing as well as upscaling. TSR and Intel's XCSS don't have a sharpening option, while AMD's FSR and NVIDIA's DLSS slash DLAA do. And I have chosen a value of 50 for both. TSR and Intel's XCSS anti-aliasing do a decent job here, but look a bit soft, while FSR3 native AA looks even better than DLSS in this scene. In this next scene, FSR3 Native AA and DLAA look noticeably better than TSR and Intel's offering, mainly because of the sharpening option, which the game desperately needs, as it is very soft and blurry otherwise. For Native AA, you can't go wrong with either FSR3 or DLAA, choose what you prefer, but if you don't have a 4090, then you're gonna be forced to upscale to get back some FPS. In this case, some effects will scale with the input resolution, so upscaling can make it look lower res, and it's quite noticeable, but it's a sacrifice almost all of us are forced to accept for the sake of better performance. Using Intel's XCSS Ultra Quality looks very blurry, and I wouldn't recommend it at all. FSR3 quality is much clearer, but starts to show some of its artifacts, while DLSS quality looks slightly more stable and retains a bit more detail. Moving on to the next scene, Intel's XCSS Ultra Quality just has drawbacks and no upsides, while FSR3 Ultra Quality looks much clearer but still suffers from some artifacts, which can be observed on the flies in the middle of the screen, while DLSS looks a bit clearer, retains more detail, and doesn't have the noticeable annoying artifacting with moving objects from FSR3. DLSS quality is the superior option here. I tested variable rate shading in many scenes, and I couldn't find any difference it made in terms of image quality, or performance, so results are inconclusive here. The anti-aliasing setting only works when using TSR, and I couldn't spot the difference between the three quality options. Both factors make this setting redundable. Post-processing at a quick glance doesn't make a difference in image quality, but the game states it affects the quality of the effects, screen filters, and image buffers. So, I tested the image quality in motion and found that it, at least, affected the quality of motion blur, and performance was the same across all options. Therefore, it's better to use high to increase their quality. For the effects quality, I couldn't tell the difference between standard and high, but I consistently found a small performance impact on high across many scenes. So set this to standard for better performance. The shadow quality setting makes 99.9% .9 no difference to the shadows. I tested many scenes and the results were the same. Same shadows, but different performance. The only visual difference I maybe was able to spot is in this scene, where again 
Maybe the shadows are a bit more defined, but I'm still not sure. Just keep this on low for basically free FPS. The reflection quality on medium starts to enable some reflections, mainly seen on puddles and water, while high increases the reflection resolution and enables reflections on more surfaces, mainly the terrain. It doesn't seem to have a big impact on water where you would think it should, but it does on other surfaces. While it does look good on high, the performance impact is not worth it. Keep this on medium. Global illumination in the scene controls the accuracy of shading. Low and medium look almost the same, while high has a small yet subtle difference, something you'll definitely not notice during gameplay. In this scene, using high enables indirect lighting on this spot. While it does look nice, it only has a subtle impact on image quality and a huge impact to performance. And in most of the game, you will be outside in open areas, where this setting has absolutely no effect on image quality, yet it still impacts performance, so keep this on low at all costs. The volumetric setting also has a small impact to image quality. Low and medium look basically the same, while high makes the light rays slightly more defined, and even then, it's very hard to notice the difference. It also doesn't affect the clouds at all. In another scene, where there's lots of fog, it doesn't seem to affect it either, and the game's description says that this setting affects the quality of visual effects which use volumetric lighting. And since fog isn't lighting, I think it's safe to say it doesn't affect it. Keep this on low for the best performance. The texture quality setting is probably broken and doesn't work right now, as I tested all three options after restarting the game, and it made absolutely no difference to image quality or VRAM usage. The view distance mainly controls foliage visibility, and the game doesn't suffer from any noticeable or harsh pop-in during movement. The foliage seems to smoothly and nicely pop into view at a far away distance, where, unless you're looking for it, you won't notice it. The foliage detail setting controls the density of foliage, not its view distance. Each setting incrementally increases density. Low looks empty, and medium and high look similar. I recommend using medium for the best balance. An important thing I found is that performance during gameplay is much better than during cutscenes. So for benchmarking, let's use the absolute worst case scenario I found so far, which is the opening real-time cutscene. There, performance on max settings using DLAA tanks heavily, where the RTX 3060 can drop as low as 11 FPS. This just shows you how demanding this game can be. In fact, and I say this a lot whenever a new game comes out, but this is without a doubt the most demanding game I have played so far. Nothing comes close to it. Except for Alan Wake 2 using the path tracing settings. Using the optimized settings with DLAA, 
improved performance over max settings by around 40 to 50 percent but we are still regularly dropping below 30 fps vram usage also decreased from 9.7 to just 9 gigabytes this game is not that scalable with the normal settings as i said earlier we are forced to use upscaling in order to get playable frame rates using dlss quality the frame rate got a significant fps boost and we are not dipping below 30 fps anymore vram usage also decreased to around 8.4 gigabytes this is at 1440p so for those of you with 8 gigs of vram if you play at 1080p and use my optimized settings you should be good to go now for the best part tell me how much your gpu suffered in this game while i go grab my popcorn